So welcome to the Q&A session for the e-filing beta pilot. I hope some of you have the opportunity to read on our webpage about e-filing or have heard me present before. Uh, the purpose of this session is to provide that second overview to e-filing and the beta pilot and to go through some of the benefits of participating as well as allow opportunity for you the audience to ask questions um, and hopefully by the end we will convince you to participate with us i'll move forward so first welcome again uh well, this is the first of two polling questions i'll have for this session simply this question please provide your name and the company you are representing this is for our purposes to see uh, who's in attendance today this will not be shared uh, with others. So, Justin, go ahead. Poll is now open. Yeah, so I'll give it a few moments for all of you to respond to that. Keep the okay. Today's agenda, again, I'll provide an overview of e-filing, discuss the certificate data elements, and then the PGA message set option. Then I will go into some of the industry benefits, uh, there's a total of six, and then the role of importers and how you as an importer can get involved. Then I'll address some of the our most recent IT development and some of the components of the product registry, uh, as you can see in the sub bullets. And then I'll open it to discussion and for any of your questions. So what is e-filing? It is our newest initiative at CPSC that modernizes how certificate data is processed by enabling importers of regular consumer products like you to electronically file certain data elements for my certificate compliance uh, via the partner government agency message set. Uh, so this, uh, many of you are already familiar with the entry process. This is like an addendum uh, and we are requesting specific certificate data that is already found on the certificate and as an importer of a regulated consumer product, um, including children's products and other general use products, you already required since 2008 to have a certificate and conduct third party lab testing on your product. This is simply transitioning from paper or PDF to an electronic copy. So why are we doing this? From CPC's perspective, we only, um, we are unable to use the certificate data as, currently, as it currently stands for our risk assessment and targeting. We only really review the certificates but once we identify. Oh, oops, I lost this. I have to reshare my PowerPoint. Um, one moment. There we go. All right, so let me start over about why we're doing e-filing. As I said, uh, we only review the certificates once 
we identify a shipment for an exam and we place that shipment on hold and that at that point our investigators at the court will examine the documents and request a certificate. And because the data or the certificate comes in usually as a PDF or a paper format, we do not have, have the opportunity for risk assessment and targeting because that information is not in a format that we could use um, for our risk assessment methodology. So by asking importers to file the certificate data electronically, it provides us more substance to use in our risk assessment. I've previously done studies and we have found certain elements on the certificate as well as the lack of certificate at the time of import does result in higher risk. So we want to incorporate those data points into our risk assessment to be able to more actively target shipments with substantive hazards. I'll later go on into the benefits of why I, you should participate in e-filing. On the right, you see the timeline. We currently are in, in between fall 2022 and spring 2023. We are currently doing IT development with importer input. Uh, we do have a select working group with nine importers who are participating with us. I will address that on a later slide. Relatively soon, we'll finalize the CATER, and that will be made available for brokers and software developers to begin their IT development including. Starting this summer, 2023, we'll do conduct participant training and some early testing. In the fall of 2023, we will begin the beta pilot, which will run for six months. And then by year end 2024, we hope to finalize rule making. So this, uh, so this is to say that we plan to make e-filing permanent. So filers or importers of regularly consumed products will be required to provide the certificate elements at the time of import. During the time of the beta pilot as a volunteer, you won't necessarily have to provide the certificate data for every product you bring in, but we will encourage you to build up to that capacity given that we are choosing to make this a requirement. Uh, this, by participating, uh, that's one of the benefits is that you have more time to transition to that electronic filing. If you wait towards the end of 2024 um, until the rulemaking is finalized, there will be a shorter uh, phase in period and there, and you would have a um, a steeper learning curve at that moment. So if you participate with us now, that's my well, first benefit that I'm offering is that you, you have much more time to transition. And if you run into any hiccups, you would be able to uh, work with us to resolve that. If you wait till when rulemaking is finalized, um, we will begin flagging more and submitting, sending warnings to importers who fail to provide complete certificate data, um, and that may result in a higher risk score for your shipment. So it would be advantageous to participate now because the more data you could provide in advance would to a lower risk score. So these are the certificate data elements that we are uh, testing in e-filing, and it's very similar to data that you already find on the certificates. I'll go through this briefly. First is the ID of the finished product. The second is each consumer product safety rule to which the finished product has been certified. Third um, is the date when the product was manufactured. Fourth is the place of manufacturing where the finished product was produ manufactured, produced, or assembled. Uh, fifth is the date of lab testing. Six is uh, the part in whose testing and certificate depends, which is the laboratory. And lastly, is a checkbox indicating that a required certificate currently exists for the finished product. And as part of e-filing, we'll have two options. I will, the first option and probably the preferred option is to use our product registry, which is a database that we are creating and will maintain. Uh, this is solely on CPSC's end. So the importer will file the certificate data, 
data in the registry and then reference a product registry ID with their entry document, which would be submitted in AIDS. And then all that data will be sent to the risk assessment methodology that CPSC operates. By doing it this way, if you consistently bring the same product over and over again, you only have to file the certificate data once and then only reference that certificate while submitting it into ACE. So we're talking about only a couple of lines of data in the of PG line data in the message set. The second option is to file all the certificate data at the time of entry, which as I mentioned is seven data points, but that data elements, but that would include uh, many more data points because um, there are some like sub data points for each element every single time for each shipment via ACE. So if you do bring a repeated product, you will just have to resubmit, resubmit the data. Great, so these are the benefits that we are offering as a participant in e-filing in the beta pilot specific. Uh, first, we'll be testing a shorter review clock. So e beta pilot participants will um, benefit from a shorter two-way messaging clock. I believe many of you already received a uh, one USG notification from CPSC where your shipment would be under review. The max amount of time as it currently stands is um, 16 business hours in the ocean environment or eight business hours in an air and truck environment for, uh, from the time that entry is filed. And that is if you file on, or excuse me, um, the time of actual arrival if entry is filed on their three business days. There are ways to make it shorter. However, this new uh, shorter review clock could be advantageous um, because it would, we are not at this point where we when we test this clock, we won't be looking at when at what point you file the entry documents, whether it's uh, more or less than three days. We will just have a blanket review clock where it is eight business hours for after entry is filed in the ocean environment or four business hours in the air and truck environment. So this means if you file well in advance, uh, the review period will end well in advance of your shipment arrival. If you uh, are delayed and you provide the entry documents right before arrival, uh, the clock will begin at the time of the entry after at the time entry is filed, uh, not the date of actual arrival. So at that point, um, the clock will still process in four to eight business hours and won't be delayed depending on when you provide the entry documents. Secondly, we would <coughs> beta pilot participants may see a reduction in their risk score over time. And that's based on the amount of data provided and uh, as well as providing compliant data. Uh, so that's an advantage of participating earlier with us because the data you provide during the beta pilot will be incorporated into your risk scores uh, by waiting until the final rule. That just means less months of data that could have been provided. The reduction in risk scores may result in reduced hold times and fewer exams, which may reduce cost to the importer. Third, we promise that there be no disruptions to operations during the pilot. Uh, we will continue our normal business operations at the port, but there will be no extra scrutiny or holds during the pilot. We won't be holding your shipments to check for the certificate, specifically if you participate in the pilot. Uh, instead, we'll probably do some post audits af after the pilot begins. And if your shipment is held and an exam is requested, and this is, again, based on normal operations that our investigators are conducting, that um, conducting as of today, those holds and exams would be prioritized. Four, this, uh, the beta pilot and e-filing will uh, increase our focus on higher risk shipments and it will which may result in fewer holds to check for certificates. So we'll have a greater focus on higher risk products. Uh, we will, holds will be more likely performed for substantial violations rather than for certificates 
as the certificate data would already be provided at the time of entry. So we would have the time to review the data before making that decision. So again, fewer holds results may result in reduced costs to the importer. Then as a participant in the beta pilot, CPSC staff would be readily available to answer any of your product regulatory questions. Uh, these are in addition to uh, questions related to e-filing, these are specifically uh, related to some certain regulations pertaining to your products that you are importing. And lastly, you have the opportunity to provide feedback, which would be used to inform rulemaking before the full implementation of e-filing. So for the role of the importer, uh, for the success of e-filing, we really need your support and participation. Uh, ultimately, the importer, you are the main participant in the beta pilot because you have the oversight of the data and you would be responsible for filing with the assistance of your broker. So as an importer, uh, first we need to identify a broker partner. Uh, if you work with most brokers, we encourage asking all of them, but you can just work with one. Um, this only applies, of course, if you're not a self-filer. And then if you would continue to work with your broker partner to identify TPSC regulated products that will be included in the beta pilot. Again, these are all products regulated by TPSC that require a certificate. Uh, if you go to our webpage, you will be able to find that information. Uh, and prior to the pilot, we will disseminate all this HTS codes that we would be flagging as part of the pilots to assist you to find those regulated products. Uh, again, if you want to start with a subset of products that you have certificate data readily available and then build up to your whole portfolio, that would be possible as well. But we do encourage that you uh, work as hard as possible to get to that point where you're providing certificate data for all of your regulated products. And lastly, you would be responsible to manage certificate data in an electronic format that be transmitted in the full message set or the product registry broker support. The product registry will be built in such a way that allows for data to be uploaded in a batch or via the API, as well as certificates being submitted to interface. And I'll touch on that later. So again, um, if you were willing to participate, uh, please notify us, reach out to us. There'll be an email at the final slide. Uh, again, identify a bro broker if applicable. And uh, step three is to complete the beta pilot onboarding and system training, which will begin this summer. Four uh, is to be, um, if applicable, if you choose to use your product registries to enter the certificate data. Fifth would be the file, the PG message set, and then Sixth step is to provide us with periodic feedback throughout the beta pilot. We will use surveys during the beta pilot to get your feedback, but of course, we'll be open to any of your feedback uh, via email or phone call. Um, I do want to address if you are a broker on this call, uh, you do have to find an importer to participate with because the importer is the one who is responsible for the data itself. Um, the broker is not responsible for the certificate data, so you do have to have a partner. Um, so obviously these steps are different, but you do um, please reach out to clients you think would be uh, interested in the beta pilot to import regulated uh, consumer products. Uh, and if you have other questions, please ask. Oh, this is James. Uh, just just to educate me a little bit, I'm 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 the deputy CIO at Exit, uh, within Exit. So so help me understand. So right now, in terms of uh, your importers that have volunteered for the beta project, is is there a cap that you're looking for, and um, how many do you have right now that are participating? Uh, our goal is to find thirty to fifty importers where. Reaching that goal, we are um, approximately 22. So we still have plenty of room available for importers. Okay, that that sounds good. And 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 I guess my second question is, 
Um, so by the end of, I, I guess it's the May time frame that you're targeting um, with P is it PGA messaging? Uh, can you can you talk a little bit around that? Is it is that a collaboration mechanism with CBP? Yes, but we're working very closely with CBP to build the message set. Um, I've already had multiple meetings with them, and they'll be shortly beginning development cycle, and then that should conclude by the early summer. At that point, we'll begin uh, testing with um, actually the working group of nine participants, nine importers that you see on this slide. Um, so uh, let me continue on, and James, if you have any other questions, uh, please pull them to the end. That sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. So. As I mentioned previously, we have a working group of nine importers who are actually who we are actually consulting with as part of the IT development. Um, and they're being supported by their broker and industry partners. Uh, so they we are excuse me, I'm hosting bi-weekly with them, bi-weekly meetings with them, and they're providing uh, iterative feedback and the development of the product registry including addressing the system requirements, functionality, process flows, and data elements. I'll cover a few of those process flows on the later slides. Uh, they would be the first to test integration of the registry to their internal systems, uh, which will serve as a blueprint for the remaining participants. So these biweekly meetings are posted on CPSC's calendar and are open to the public as well uh, for you to listen in. So this working group, we have covered many topics, the ones highlighted in green. Um, so we already covered the majority of them. Uh, initially, we covered uh, business account creation and management, which includes adding additional administrators and creating and managing collections. Uh, which we are using the term collection as essentially the sub-registry. This is where you will have, the, the collection is where you would store the certificates and we'll provide the option where you have multiple collections um, in your account. Uh, additionally, we, will, uh, we have already addressed uh, how you would add and edit products to your collections, manage products, bulk import, export, and editing. Uh, we also have discussed the user permissions and management, creating and managing user accounts, for example, especially if you're third party. So as an importer, you would be the business account holder because you are the one, this is your data that you need to manage. However, you can provide permissions to other third parties like your brokers or labs to have access to your collections and they will be able to provide data for you. Of course, at the end, you would still be responsible to certify. Um, that's where the creation management user accounts and the managing and collection users will come in. Uh, and that is, re um, and that's related to why we you would be able to create multiple collections, be able to organize collections based on uh, what third parties are assisting you in providing the data. So this first screenshot is um, essentially how your account would look, your business account would look, um, in the product registry, uh, the company information at the top, uh, this second box where it says company account admins, that is for the business account holders, and those are should solely be the importers. So the company example here is called Storm Importers. So you could add multiple account admins um, and adjust the roles um, as you see fit. Um, but again, these are just of the importer. Uh, later, I'll show how you the flow where you could add third party uh, users to your flow. And at the bottom, uh, that's where your collections would be listed. And if you were to kind of select this purple bottom, purple button in the bottom right, that's when you could add a collection where you could add your certificate data. So this is the user interface on how to add products to collection. This is only one way to add the products. There would be also options for batch uploads or using the API. But if you just wanted to add one certificate, you would have a flow like this where you provide the product details, including the ID, um, and you can provide additional IDs as well. You'd be required to provide one at least. 
Uh, you, you also provide the product description. At the top, you can see you have a testing and attestation tab. So as you go through it, you would add your manufacturing information, your testing information, and then attest to it at the end. And we build it in such a way that it's as user-friendly as possible with drop-downs or pop-up windows when you have to select the certificates, um, or sorry, the citations, for example, if you use a CPC, or sorry, if you're providing a CPC, you would, uh, you would need to provide uh, the name of the CPC credit laboratory. However, since we already manage that data, it would just be an ID field that you would enter. You don't have to provide the full information. And the business accounts, uh, in each business account you have, we will essentially save the manufacturer some lab that you have provided previously. And so you could reference past manufacturers or labs that you have used. You don't have to repeatedly provide that information. So editing products in a collection, this is how, how the screen will look. Um, you have each row will be a different certificate versus a different product. And you have this drop down where you can see the product details, manufacturer details, testing details. I mean, this still is a little bit subject to change, but this is the concept right here. And if I'm um, working on this product collection, if you wanted to add a user to be able to provide, to upload data, such as maybe this user could be a broker, you, in the upper right, you see another purple button that says invite a user. And then you will get this pop up where you have the email. And then you can select the role, in this case, an editor, but you could also have uh, roles that are limited to just like a read role or just providing the data but not being able to edit. And then at this point, I'll open it to discussion. Uh, if you have any questions, please raise your hand. My colleague Justin here will uh, also be reviewing the or so we're in the chat box and reading off any questions they may type in, but I do encourage anyone who has questions to speak up. Uh, please raise your hand and Justin will call on you. And then there's a, a second poll uh, that asks about your interest in participating. Um, if you're willing to answer it, uh, please do. And then uh, we'll reach out to you um, in the future. But if you are, need more time, um, you could view this, go to our website, cpsc.gov forward slash e-filing, or email us at efilingpilot at cpsc.gov. I'm gonna go back to the previous slide. Uh, Justin, you could start the poll and then you could open the floor for questions. Justin, can you read off short question? Uh, so the first question we have in the chat is, can you touch on the HTS numbers being provided to the test participants? Yeah, so in advance, and I hope um, soon with, when we publish the Kater, uh, we will provide the HTS codes. Most of these codes are codes that we currently actually target off of. Um, and these codes would include any product that requires a certificate. Uh, if you are curious, you can go to our website as of now and browse there and you can find the product lists that of products that require certificates. There are some pages in the small business ombudsman webpage 
uh, where you can find that information. So we have another question. Well, the next question is, uh, will there be a requirement to transmit any certificate information on which the final CPC slash GCC is based on? Uh, that's a very good question. So we are focused on the final product. And so if you are using component part certificates uh, to create that final certificate, uh, you would provide that information in the product registry as well in the message, the full message site, you have the opportunity to provide multiple or list multiple labs and the citations for each lab. So say you have a product, um, they have you created for multiple components, you have multiple certificates, you could provide all of that. If and if you take the other approach and just do a final test on that product and have a final test report, you could just create a certificate off of that final test report. Um, so just to kind of quickly summarize, you, yes, you have multiple options. Excuse me, you have multiple options to provide that lab information. Um, next question is, uh, if I have one product with multiple manufacturing dates in one shipment, will the e-filing allow me to enter a range of dates or do I need to uh, do a separate fi filing for each manufacturer? Um, that, that question seems very nuanced and I don't quite think I could answer it directly. In most scenarios, you, you should have one certificate per product where that, where we would, uh, take the position that if it's, um, if it's a product manufactured on that date or in that run. So if you're referring to products that we, you know, are manufactured over a run over a series of days, yes, that all would be considered as on that could all be placed on one certificate. That's how it currently stands. And in that scenario, you just um, well, we only are really requesting the month and year of manufacturing. So um, in that case, you just have to provide the month and year. We do. <clears throat> would have the option where you could provide like the lot number two. Um, but again, that's an option that's more for your purposes to keep track of. Um, but if this is a question more about like batch manufacturing and repeated manufacturing, that's something uh, we will address as part of the beta pilot um, and answer at what point would you be required to submit a new certificate for that product? And, um, and to what extent can you include more multiple batch runs over a series of weeks on one certificate. Um, the next question is uh, currently uh, CPSC hold, so, sorry, currently the CPSC holds do not prevent entry shipments from moving uh, to the final uh, on signing. Yeah. Will the new process uh, be a stop such as current FDA review? You have, um, you have LPA holds, et cetera. Uh, no. So, to the first part of that question, that is absolutely true. Um, the under review message does not place so a It's not a hold on shipment. So your shipment can go off off premise to the consignee. It just can't enter commerce until the under review message or the clock runs out. That's why we're testing the shorter review period. So, uh, you could you could take those products and enter commerce as um, earlier than under the current uh, review period. And we will not be uh, what you suggested about FDA. We're not going to take that approach. We're not changing anything in our enforcement of certificates. We are current, we're, we will continue doing everything the same as we currently are. Next question is uh, Can CPSC define what products they classify as high risk? Um, that's a challenging question to answer because we don't, so we're looking at, um, more so a substantive violations. And so we're looking at stuff like lead or phthalates. We're looking at flammability. Um, and we have a lot of regulations surrounding children's products. And so like, we're not 
particularly looking at like specific products per se. We're looking at like products that may have certain violations or more likelihood of certain violations. And I can't really tell you that off the top of my head. And as part of our risk assessment, we also look at um, like where the pro where the shipments come from, country of origin, uh, HTS code. Um, and I can't really answer farther than that. I just don't have that answer. I, I'm still here. If you want to ask any more questions, we're still fielding them. Um, we have till the end of the hour, but here is our information, our contact information. Um, I will make this PowerPoint and this recording available online as soon as possible uh, so you can review it and share with others. Again, I want to encourage your participation. Uh, we hope that you see this as an advantage to you as well. Um, uh, you can go back and look at the benefits that we are offering, and ultimately, like we we will be making this uh, into a, turning this into a final rule. But we want to work with you now to be able to iron out all the kinks and work with you so you don't reach a point where you, you very quickly have to meet this requirement. We still have plenty of time to reach that point. So please work with us now and provide the feedback uh, to make this uh, e-filing as seamless as possible for all importers. Okay, I have another question. Yep. Next question is, uh, can you clarify how bulk uploads will work? Yeah, so that would be using a CSV file. Uh, we'll give you a template and you can just, um, using your system, transition that data into a CSV. Um, and there will be a field available in the product registry where you upload that file and then you will have an opportunity to review. There will also be check built in. So the system would automatically check that you have the correct data and the correct format and uh, flag any certificates that have errors. And then you have the opportunity to correct those before you finally um, actually like import that data into the product registry. Next question is, if we, uh, uh, if we file e-filing, um, will we have to include the CPC with the shipment? Um, that's a very good question. We are currently reviewing the regulation 16 CFR 1110, and of course e-filing will affect that, and that is the citation that we will be updating as part of the rulemaking. At this moment, I can't really, I can't answer you directly. Uh, and so, but hopefully in the in future, near future, once we uh, start to work on the rule, that will get you that answer. Next question is, um, are you able to, are you able to share details on fees or fee ranges for third party certifications and the time it takes to get 1 issued? Um, I do not have that information. Notice anyone in CPSC, we don't deal with any. Fees information and. Um, so, the question is related to accreditation. Laboratories is that what sorry, Justin is that some of the questions about accreditation. Uh, it's the fee for third party certification. Certification. Okay. So, yeah, um, we do have the requirement for third party testing. Uh, you could go to our website and find information there. We also have a search function where you could search for laboratories um, in your country or 
where you could their manufacturer that are accredited uh, for children's products where you could conduct a testing and at that point you could do your own outreach to them about uh, costs and fees. If, if it's a general use product, it does not necessarily have to be at an accredited laboratory. You could do testing in house even as well. Next question. Next question. So to clarify, uh, there are three options for transmission. One, a first single product. Two, bulk upload. Three, EDI transfer of information. Yeah, that's um, for providing information, the product registry. That's exactly right. Three options right there. Next question is, uh, when do you anticipate being able to provide the HTS and not just product descriptions? Um, I hope so uh, within next month uh, when we finalize the tear and publish that, uh, then I would hope to also publish the HTS list and yes, so we're, we're still and if it's not the full list, it would be at least a preliminary list that you could work off of, and then we may provide an update later on. Next question, uh, will brokers be able to have multiple importers under their account? Okay, um, so actually the product registry will work in the reverse. So the accounts are based on the importer and they're able to invite brokers to assist them in uploading the data into the registry. But as a broker, you're able to work with multiple importers. So um, this, you did not see this, we haven't, yeah, created this, but as a broker, once you get access to the registry through one importer and then you gain access to others, you will have your own, um, essentially your own interface, your own account information. Um, so you have essentially your own screen that would show you uh, to which product collections you have access to. And uh, that, that's the approach we're taking because of course the certificate data is owned by the importer. So as a broker, you would see like, I'm working with this importer A for these collections, I can submit data and then I see broker importer B and I'm able to provide data and then so on. So as a broker, Arthur, we'll be able to see all of the accounts that we are doing work for under one, say login, for example, we won't have to have like separate logins or go in and out in order to access information for different importers. Yeah, as a broker, you just have one login, uh, as exactly as you said, and you'll be able to see uh, with which importers you're working with. Great, thank you. Uh, next question is, uh, if there are errors in data transmission, will CPSC notify importers? Yes, we will test warning flags during the pilot, and so we would um, so, of course, if you provide incomplete data, you would receive a warning and then we'll, we'll figure out at what point, like, what are the business rules as well. And, if, for example, if there's formatting issues or if there's, um, or, or just like, if you compare data fields and they don't match, we will inform you about those issues so you could correct that um, when filing. And we will also publish those business rules in advance. Uh, 
uh, is CPSC working with other PGAs, not just CBP? For example, if the product is a non-medical device subject to FDA and CPSC? Uh, we're not working with other agencies to that extent. Uh, we're only primarily working with CBP, but I've looked at other PJ message sets uh, to get ideas how to create e-filing. I am like a scenario like that. Um, I mean, we wouldn't be sharing the data you provide with us to FDA if that is your question uh, in the end, but and it would end up being your responsibility as the importer broker to know uh, for which agencies you file PJ message. And then just a little bit of added information, because I'm not sure where the question is coming from, but each PGA is a separate standalone message. Yes. And uh, given the CPSC's product jurisdictions, um, there is very little overlap, I would say, between other products, maybe than those with FDA, but I don't think you're going to foresee many scenarios where you have to submit one or two PGA message sets, more than two PGA messages. Is there currently a tear covering CPSC data elements? Not yet. That's the thing I want to finalize as soon as possible. And I hope by the end of this month, it will be made available on CBP's website. Um, the working group of nine has already reviewed it and provided comments. And so I'm just incorporating those comments. Um, many of them are just clarifications and uh, small edits. And once that is complete, I'll uh, ask CBP to publish it on their website. And, also included on CPSC's website. Arthur, is there any intent to have another session like this, maybe as we get a little bit closer and the Katera has been finalized and people have had a chance to review it? Uh, possibly. I, I mean, I'll be open to having another session like this, but I haven't planned anything yet. Uh, but we are to that point, though, I'm really encouraging anyone on this call to like ask your participation because we are tr we are really trying to finalize the numbers and the number of participants because uh, relatively soon we'll begin the training and uh, provide guidance material. So um, at a certain point we do have to cut off, but that's not that won't be until a couple months from now. Um, so my hope is after this session that you could talk internally with your team. Uh, consider the material provided today and available on our web page and get back to us as soon as possible um, with a willingness to participate. Well, oh, oh, we have a question. Yeah. Uh, this question is, uh, is there a limit of entries required per month, for example, uh, to be considered a pilot? No, we'll take anybody. Uh, we actually want to get a pretty broad set of importers and brokers. So we're looking at importers of all sizes, importers of different modes of transportation, of different products, um, because we see that each of you have a unique situation, um, different means of maintaining your certificate data. So we truly want to get our numbers uh, to even past 30 because we want to 
has all these scenarios and many of them is still they're still unknown for us uh, but the larger group you have uh, i feel there's a fewer risk of running into issues during the beta pilot Well, at this moment, I'm going to stop the recording and I finished before the hour. And so I want to thank you all for listening to me speak. And I hope I've convinced a few of you to participate with us. So thank you once again, and I hope to hear from you soon.